Heavenly Father, once again, we want to thank you for your love and grace. We thank you because you are good. We thank you because you are kind. We thank you because you are faithful. We ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you please speak to everyone today. Lord, touch us, speak to us in a way like you always do that brings about total transformation and love. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, you can have this. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Everyone is welcome to church. It's nice to see everybody in church and um, to be together to the Lord in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And in this service this month, why in the other services, I've started a series on faith, which is really powerful. In this service this month, I will be teaching on, on the fourth service, healing emotional wounds. Would you please turn your Bible to 2 Samuel chapter 13? 2 Samuel chapter 13. Second Samuel chapter 13 and verse 6. Second Samuel chapter. Yeah. Second Samuel. Maybe before I do that, I should do something else. Um, I should do something else. Uh, would the drummer help me bring the drummer's chair? Where's our drummer? Bring the drummer's chair. Second Samuel. Third John verse 2 first. Before we go to Second Samuel. Third John verse 2. It's always my foundation when I teach on things like this. Yeah, bring it. I need someone that is a bit on the big side, but feels secured. Because I wanted to come and sit on it. Yeah, most of the time, yeah. If you feel secured about it, that's fine. Just come. Anybody like that here? I feel secured. No, that's not. I need someone maybe a bit bigger. Maybe. Maybe. Can I get someone that is a bit bigger than that? All the bigger people. <laughs> I heard that. Our friends were pulling that out and she said, I'm not secure. <laughs> it. Are you sitting comfortably or you're sitting with caution? With caution. Exactly. I want to show you something. The way your emotions are is like this chair. Please stand. Most of you have a full-fledged body but your emotions are so immature. The problem is that the whole of your life sits on your emotion. That's why you can have a bank MD that is emotionally a child. And when he gets into a marriage or relationship, he begins to misbehave because you think that because he's so successful and raising his career, he's emotionally matured. And that's why most men, when it comes to emotions, are babies. They know how to make money, but they don't know how to handle their feelings. And that's why emotional mastery is very powerful. Are, are we getting somewhere already? Yes. That's why emotion, the reason why is that most of the time, when they say build life, people are building, they're building their career, they're building their career, they're building their finances, they're building all those things. But the emotion that will carry it, it's not been built. Can I shock you? You can even be a very strong Christian with very weak emotions. And the challenge is this. If your emotion is not built and you keep building yourself, just imagine she becomes two sides two size of this. What will happen? <laughs> if she becomes two of this size and she has the same emotional capacity, 
she will crumble. Why will she crumble? She will crumble because her emotions cannot carry what she has become. That is why most celebrities and influential people have troubled marriages. You know why? The reason is this. Nothing reveals your emotional state than the most intimate relationship with you. Nothing. That's why, that's why very successful people, in fact, it's almost as if the more successful you are, the more likely you're going to have a marital problem. The reason why you must be conscious of building that emotional place. Who knows what who understands what I'm talking about? So the question is this. We're doing things to build our career. We're building things to build our, our houses. What are you doing to build your emotional life? And most of the time, it's, it's, it's most of the part of life that's overlooked. You know, I, I saw a statistic that challenged me. They said a lot of the women in psychiatric ward, they're there because of emotional issues that has to do with relationships. But everybody is trying to build this and build something really wonderful and build something really nice. But they are not building the emotions in which it's been built upon. What did Apostle John say? Third John verse 2. Let's read it from the Bible. Verse 2. Thank you. He says, Behold, I wish above all things that you would prosper even as what? So, so just imagine there was a time that she was my size. There was a time that she was my size and this seat fits perfectly. And it was a comfortable seat. I, I feel perfectly on it. I don't have to relax. You know, but as you grow in size, you must also grow your emotions. So the question is that are you sure you've not outgrown your emotional capacity? And the thing about emotion is that the older you grow, the emotional wounds and hurts you have, they begin to what? Reveal themselves. They become very challenging. And that's why we're having this series about healing emotional wounds. So the foundation of this is 3 John verse 2. Beloved, I wish that thou mayest prosper even as your soul. It says, we're hoping that you'll prosper proportional to your soul. So that if your prosperity passes your soul, then your soul will be in trouble. Have you ever wondered why the prodigal son, when the father gave him money, went away? Maybe because, just my own theory, there was no mother in the picture. So he never really experienced home wars. So he always wanted to go out and look for home. Because what emotion does is that it helps you understand things in a deeper dimension. Have you ever asked yourself why Jesus is carrying up between Jesus Christ? Maybe because everybody was from Bethlehem. He was the only one that was not from the native place where Jesus was from. And he felt like an outsider. And he didn't know how to deal with that outsider feeling. In the book of Psalm 23, the psalmist spoke about emotion. He says, he makes me like that in what? He leaves me like what? What's the next thing he does? He says, he restores my soul. My soul could feel empty. My soul could feel drained. But what the good shepherd does is that it takes me away sometimes. And it begins to help me restore my soul. So in this series of teaching today, as we deal with emotional issues, I'm praying that souls will be restored. I'm praying that you develop enough emotional capacity to help us. And I want to say something to you. In these stories, we're going to share a lot. I'm going to share some stories. We're going to share some stories. I don't want us to hold back. If you're dealing with something, we could help. If you've learned something and bring something, your story could be someone else's deliverance. So let's go into Second Samuel right now. Are you here? You can help me get the chair. Second Samuel chapter 13, verse 6. Second Samuel chapter 13, verse 6. So the Bible says this. Huh. So this was the case of the sons of David. Sons and daughters of David. Amnon. Amnon was the daughter of, was the son of David. Somehow, Amnon had a stepsister called Tamar. And Amnon wanted to have sex with Tamar. Let me tell you something. Even that desire 
shows some strange emotional issues. Is it that it's going to be emotional or demonic? Because out of all the girls you could have, why do you want to have your sister? Have you seen some people that always rebel? They are here. Once they say go straight, they never had a problem until they say go straight. But once they say go straight, they say, why? I'm going not straight. <laughs> Ask them. Most of the time, because they grew up in setting where they were very suppressed. And now, they don't know how to respond to instruction because they think instructions mean suppression. Who knows what I'm talking about? So sometimes, listen to me, if you're going to heal emotionally, you need to begin to slow down and observe yourself. Why do I do this? Someone say I'm a sexual addict. I don't think you're a sexual addict. I think you have a sexual pattern you have not addressed. Because sex, sexual patterns are there. There are times you feel like having sex. Have you noticed? Thank you for being honest. You notice, just like drinking. There are times, just like smoking. I noticed one at the university, this was many years ago, that during exams, smoking increased. I didn't understand it. It was later I understood that because there was exam pressure, that the way people dealt with the stress was through smoking. The same way smoking increased, sex during exam increased a lot. There was a lot of anxiety. And some people just learned how to deal with the anxiety by smoking. And this is why smoking works when you have anxiety. Because smoking changes your breathing pattern. And breathing patterns can control anxiety. You know that just from science. So the Bible says, Amnon began to warn his sister, then he had a terrible friend that gave him a plan. So the Bible says, Amnon made himself sick and the king came to see him. And Amnon said to the king, I pray thee, let Tamar my sister. So, his friend said, don't worry, let your sister come. You know, let your sister come and come and give you food. And when she comes, you rape her. You know, the point is this. And let me tell you something about emotions. Eh? If you don't, this is how emotions are. If you don't deal with them, they will overtake you. They will now, see, emotions come and it's a point of emotions. You can stop it. You can attend to it. But when you stop, when you ignore it, it will keep growing, 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 growing. Then it will overtake you. That's why. Can I, can I talk? All of you people, ladies. <laughs> share the link first. Let's share the link first. Since I wanted to tell you that before. Everybody get on your phone. Share the link. Share the YouTube link. I want, you know, I never say this on Sundays. Yeah, but I wanted to share. I want everyone to share the link and say, Pastor is preaching about this. Put the link on your status and say, hitting emotional one. Everybody do that. I want everybody to watch it. I want everybody to watch it. I just, it just occurred to me that I didn't say that. Thank you. Why are you not sharing the link? You know this is not next time I can see if you don't share it. <laughs> I will look at you very well. You should share it on either your Instagram, put it on your status, take it there. If you don't have it, put it on the screen. All of you online, share the link. Quiet members, if I catch you not sharing the link, you explain to me the wound that is making you not share the link. In the gallery, Timmy, look at that brother we had. He's not sharing. In white shirts and blue jeans, he's not sharing. You think I can't see him? And this one's here by my hide. They, my, let me see. I think I know him. Let me tap the brother with the, with the mali hair. Uh, bro, don't sleep like that, too. I'm looking at you now. Tell him to share, tell him to share. Tell him what you are sharing. Tell him what you are sharing. So you can put it on your status, you can share. Okay. So I was going to say something about ladies. So thank you. Thank you for putting it there. I was going to say something about ladies. Some ladies always say they ignore love because they've had bad experiences. So you see them ignore, you say, no, I don't want I don't want, 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 I don't want. Eventually, when they fall in love, you'll be surprised who they fell in love with. 
The reason why is this. I want to show you the reason why. Because all the time they were ignoring it, their emotion was building, building, building. Until one day, it overtook them. It overtook them in a way that they were no longer rational. It was who exactly they did not want. And why they came to that stage is exactly that person they went to date in another name. I hope you know you can date people that have different names. But the same person. When you, you just think it's Chinedu and, Chine, and, and Chioma. No, no, no. It's Chinedu and Chuma. It's all the same person. Aki and, you know, and Chinedu. So you think Aki and Chinedu and, and it's the same person. They all abuse you. They all gaslight you. They all don't treat you well. Why are you doing? Because it's a pattern. So what happens to you is this. Let me give you what you do. Before the emotion. So what happens? You keep saying, I don't, I don't. I don't. You suppress the emotion. Before the emotion becomes full and takes you over, find a way to manage it. I noticed it with my diet. If I don't eat when I'm hungry, when I become very hungry, I'm going to eat sugar, something that is very nasty. I say, hey, I want ice cream. I want... Because when I should naturally eat healthy food, I will say, no, no, I can manage it. When... Then all of a sudden, I can't manage it. And the same thing happens to you. You don't suppress emotion and it will go away. No, 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 no. You have to release it. It must take its full course. Like water cannot be stopped. It can only be diverted. That's why the Bible says this. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from what? From the law of sin and death. That means for me to get out of the law of sin and death, that another law must come. The law of what? Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Are you getting blessed already? All right. So we're talking about how to deal with, it, with, with this. So, how, you know, so eventually, I'm going to jump because the, the story is about 15 verses, which I can't read in this service. From verse 6 to verse 23, speaks about how Tamar came and offered him food. So let's look at maybe verse 14. Let's look at when he offered him food. And the Bible says this. The Bible says this. The um, Bible says this. In verse 14. However, because he could not hearken to her voice, but being stronger than her, she forced her and raped her. And when she raped her, this is what you know is an emotional issue. As soon as he raped her, the Bible says this, and Hamnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred he hated her was greater than the love when he loved her. And Hamnon said to her, Arise and be gone. And she said, There's no cause for this. And she said, There is no cause this evil in sending me away. He said, there's no cause. This evil in sending me away is greater than the other thing you did unto me. And he will not act into her. And he called his servant that ministered unto him and said, put out this woman. This was the woman one hour ago. She was the whole of your dream to sleep with her. Because the thing with emotions is this. Watch this. You know what the emotion, emotions are? It's called emotions. They are emotions. They are mobile. And that's why sometimes... If you can just control your emotion right now and manage it, it will disappear. Just in one moment, she had become the enemy. So we're talking about healing emotional wounds here. What about healing emotional wounds? So, so, so let's jump. I want us to jump. Verse 19. So the Bible says this, and this is Tamar now. This is Tamar's story. We've read Amnon's story. So, Amnon had an emotional issue and he thought that why did Amnon want to sleep with Tamar? Everybody look at me. Look at me. Most people that have sex outside marriage, most people, they're looking for love. And when they say they're looking for love, it's not L-O-V-E. L -O -V -E. They're looking for connection. They want someone that they can be genuinely connected to. It's not the only reason. It's one of the reasons. And Unfortunately, their mind has tied authentic connection and sex together. Because your mind can tie anything together. I hope you know. Your mind can combine anything. For example, when I was younger, I was in boarding school, and we learned how to drink, eat Gary, sugar, milk, and cheeto, black orange. Did you ever try it before? With granite. The color of that food was purple. You know, to you, it looks like, ew, ew, ew. Very nice. <laughs> the reason why is that once your mind combines things, your mouth will eat it. 
I'm telling you. Once your mouth, once your mind can combine something, your mouth will eat it. So let me say something to you. Oh, wow. I don't even know how we'll get here. So, people do things for six reasons, but I can't tell you that now. I just want to name this connection. Another one reason why people do things is for significance. So, people do things for a reason, but how they do it depends on what I call a mental map. It's, it's a mental map. It's in their head. So, some people, connection, and how they find connection is through sex. Some people find connection by drinking with somebody. So, everybody has a map in which they do it. Let me give another example. So, Another thing people want is significance. But how do you achieve significance? How you achieve significance depends on your mental map. For example, the people that blow up themselves for Boko Haram, for al what do you think they're looking for? Significance. But they believe that the way you can be significant is by killing yourself and you'll be known. That's why if you notice, when they're looking at, talking about terrorists, they don't advertise a person's picture. You know why? Because over time, they realize that making the person famous, he's raising other people that want to be like them because they're like, he's famous, I want to be famous also. It's a mental map. Someone that puts significance, can I, can I be real? I slept with Bill Gates. You're only laughing, but you know it's true. Because the way they gain significance is who they sleep with. The problem is not what they want. Take no other problem. The problem is not what they want. The problem is how they believe they will achieve what they what? Want. Praise God. So, when you see I'm not sleeping with Tama, I'm not sure I was trying to do the wrong thing. But it was his mind about how to achieve what he wanted. Okay, let's keep going. Verse 19. So let's look at Tamar now. The Bible says, And Tamar put on her ash, or, or ashes on her head and rent a garment of diverse colors that was on her and laid her head and went on crying. And Absalom, this is her own brother, said, brother, brother, mother and father, said unto her, said unto her, And Amnon, the, my brother, being with thee, and hold now thy peace, my sister. He is thy brother. Regard not this thing. So Tam. Tamar remained desolate in a brother Amnon's house. Oh, wow. What? Sorry, Absalom's house. This is very powerful. <laughs> Let me give you the long shot, long shot of the story. The Bible says that for two years, Tamar was in Absalom's house. Two years after. You know what Absalom did? Absalom got into one party. He killed all the king's sons. Including Amnon. You know why? The reason why is that the wound that Tamar had by cohabiting with her, she passed the wound to Absalom. And Absalom did not only punish Amnon, he killed all his brothers. Not just that, he wanted to kill his father. You know why it's important to heal the wound? The people close to you, you can pass the wounds to them. Glory to God. The people close to you can pass the wounds to them. Remember that it was you, and that's why a lot of you must be careful how you listen. Remember that Absalom was trying to be a comforter. He did not know that in the presence of comforting, he had become wounded. And remember that you would think wood goes with time. No, wound grows with time. I don't know if you heard that. You would think wound goes with time. Mm -mm. Wound grows with time. Emotional wound does not go with time. Emotional wound grows with time. That's why you will notice people that have been raped at 7, 8, when they didn't realize, it was when they get to their 20s and 30s that they became devastated. Because the more you are aware, see, when you were raped at a younger age, your body, something happened to your body, but your mind could not see sometimes your body but your mind did not capture it but as your mind grew your mind became more aware of what happened even people that grew up without mothers is when they grow up they will start feeling the fact that ah and i didn't have a mother ah i didn't have a father they will start seeing it when they were younger they couldn't tell praise god 
I said, praise God. I said, praise God. Wow. What emotional wounds. The same way wounds, physical wounds, are the function of a physical accident, emotional wounds is the aftermath of what? Of soul, of trauma, of trauma in the soul. So when you see someone happen, a wound a wound is a function of something else. You can't just have a wound. Is it not true? You can't just say, hey, how did you have a wound? Hey, I just saw a wound. Oh. No, something must have happened. So when people have emotional wound, something must have what? Happened. I'll tell you my personal story. I was in primary two. That means I must have been about six years old or seven. And I remember this accurately. And this is the reason why myself and my older brother were not very close. It's not something I'm proud of, but it's something that we're just we're not very close. I remember the very good on Silver Street, on Silver Street, I remember the exact place it happened. My brother, my brother had a brain called Yakubu. Silver Street, his house was five minutes away, five houses away from our primary school. So my brother would go to his house and they would stay in, in because, and play video games and all of those things with their friends. And while we're waiting for our driver to come and pick us. And I thought that if my brother was going to go there, I mean, this is the only person I have, there's only, well, only two guys, you know, then I should tag along. And I remember that day after day after day, my brother would chase me back, so I should go and wait in the school. I don't know why he said so. It may be because maybe that guy did not want a lot of persons in his house. Maybe his parents had a restriction. But the problem with things happening to a child is that a child cannot decipher things. That's why when parents have divorce, the children blame themselves. They can't tell what happened. So the last time was the time I went there and he spoke to me in a very way and said he was going to slap me. And I was very upset. As I talk to you right now, I did it in my mind. And that day I went back and I, I carried my black bag in my back and I cried as I went back and I said to myself, my brother doesn't love me. And to today, me and my brother were not very close. It's not something that I'm not angry with him or something. In the last two or three years, I've seen him twice. We both live in Lagos. We both live in Lagos. I've seen him twice in the last two or three years. This year, I've not seen him at all. And it's not about malice or this or that. Of course, as you grow, other things begin to build up on that. As other things begin to build up on that. But, but the thing is that, the thing about wound is that, it's the one that is wounded that knows. The one that wounds people does not know. And you know the thing, because he also was young, because if I was about six years old, I could have been six years old, I could have been about five the maximum my brother could have been would be nine. I'm only saying, because I'm not even saying I'm right, because the thing about, this is my emotion is that, when we say emotional stories, you always think you're right because you see from your perspective. You need to step out of your shoes and look at another person's perspective. That's the truth. Because most of you now, now is the time you understand what your mother was saying and what she was doing. When you were young, you thought she was being mean. But now that you're an adult, you're like, hey, my mother was wise, oh. Because now, you're gradually finding your, them, yourself in their shoes and you know it was a lot of wisdom to make those decisions. I, I, I was, the son I was speaking to, I was speaking to a couple and the mother called me and said, my, mo- my, my, my daughter is the problem of this marriage. I said, why do you say so, ma? Very, very rich couple, billionaires. I mean, the family is billionaires. And the mother said, you want to know the truth? My daughter wants to marry my, my husband. He's looking for my husband in, in, in a husband. He's looking for her father in a husband. He said, but what she does not know is this. I hid all her father's faults. So she never saw it. He said, my children think that my husband is the best. It's not true. He said, I'm the one that covered everything. So that they will never know. He says, so when they see men make men mistake, they are taken aback. And that's the challenge of protecting your children from the real world. Oh my goodness. All of you that have children. <laughs> Actually, all of you that, you know, someone says, um, what, should, what school my children go to? Will they go to Christian school? I said, it's not compulsory. 
The reason why is that you protect them so much. When they see the reward, their total mental frame will collapse. Those people that go to that university there, when they come out physically, I don't want to mention the name. <laughs> you know how they behave? As if the guys will be chasing girls like, ha! Ah, they'll be chasing girls, ha! Ah, 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 ah. It's almost as if they've never seen girls before. And the reason why is that in their school, you, you know, you, you know, the, you, you, but if you went to a school that says, I'm not saying that there's a balance between overexposing them and there's a balance to overprotecting them. Praise God. I said, Praise God. This series is kind of becoming very powerful already, right? I can feel some souls breaking down gradually. Wow. Wow. Let's read again, Second Samuel. And Tamar put ashes on her head, and this was an emotional wound, and rent her garment of diverse color that was put on her, and laid her hands on her head, and went on crying. Crying is good. You know, sometimes people, people say, I'm, I'm not ashamed to cry. I cry. If you don't cry, you have a problem. Yes. Let's tell you. Yes, because sometimes crying means you're in pain, but sometimes crying means you're healing. Because it's not about tears. It's what the tears mean. Because sometimes tears means you're happy. They're tears of joy. That's what the Bible says. But she went on crying because of what she was. The next verse. The Bible says this. Verse 20. And Absalom, my brother, said, I, I'm not thy brother being with you. And hold, and hold not thy peace, my brother. Is, is thy brother regard not this thing. And so, Tamar remained desolate. I wanted to give him another translation. That word desolate. What has another problem? He said, she remained desolate. That it had happened, but she remained heartbroken. Your breakup is not the breakup. It's that you have remained heartbroken. That's the problem. You lost someone in your family, but you have remained that way. Look at what a message says. And Tamar lived in her brother's house and remained bitter. It's, I wanted to notice the state she put herself. For how long? Two years. She was bitter. Someone says, can I do something about it? That's why you're here. Because you can do something about it. Listen to me. There's nothing you can do about the past. But there's a lot you can do about the future. Some of you here, you've been raped before. I have, I have someone I went to school with. A father got her pregnant. Yeah. It was a, it was a chaotic thing. Her father got her pregnant. Her husband was the one that took her to abort it. Her boyfriend was the one that took her to abort it. No, no, no. They got married. Her boyfriend was the one that took her to abort it. She confided in her boyfriend. I said, that's the third pregnancy. And on their wedding day, it was that man that handed over to her there. He said, so that I don't touch my other siblings, I offer myself all the time. And their mother was in that same house. He was like, God forbid, God forbid, God forbid. You know what I'm saying? So, when you think you have problems, and you hear problems, you'll be glad that your parents are poor. You, uh, okay? You'll be glad that, Father, I thank you. Ah, hey, Lord, I thank you. Praise God. The danger, so you, you saw Absalom. Absalom for two years, he was brooding, 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 brooding. You must be careful. Let me tell you something. Eh? Don't build a mountain around your bitter place. Don't build a mount of remembrance around your bitter place. Some of you, there's things that bring you sadness. Don't build a mountain there. Don't keep the picture of the person that raped you somewhere close to you. I said, I just want to be seeing him and be cursing him. You are not cursing him, you are cursing yourself. Even my own parents that are late right now, there's a place I keep their picture, but it's not a place I can see it every day. Because every time I see it, there's a feeling of sadness that it brings to me. 
There's a feeling of sadness that it brings to me. As much as possible, I avoid funeral, I avoid burial grounds. Those are things I don't like to do because it robs you. Think I'm thinking of you. I'm thinking of me. Let's begin to close. Uh, is it not time to close? No, but that's why we have the whole month. Are you not coming next Sunday? Exactly. So the first thing is that we'll discuss what... So emotional wounds are the aftermath. So let's define emotional wounds. We've seen an example of an emotional wound here. But emotional wounds are the aftermath of emotional traumas. Let's list some examples of emotional wounds to you. Number one, rejection. Rejection can be a sign of emotional wound. How do you know if someone has emotional wounds? So let me just give you, let me just give you some emotional. Let me just give you two. There are several we can list. So number one is rejection. That's a sign of an, that's a type of emotional wound. The other one is abandonment. So let, let's talk about and this one I'm not going to preach it. We're going to share with ourselves. What are some signs of emotional wounds? What are some signs of emotional wound. I can list maybe three or four, then I'll open the microphone and take two, two, two here and two from the gallery and we'll close from there. Is that okay? Oh, it's not okay? Is that okay? Oh, wow. Signs of emotional wound. Most of the time, those people are very clingy. When people have emotional wound, actually, one is rejection and abandonment. Depending on what you know, there are seven types of wound. They are very clingy. When they have relationship, they want to suffocate the person with love, and they will think the person is a problem. They don't know they are the ones that is what clingy. Where, where, where are they? You're here. Oh wow! Listen to them very well. Most of the time. They were abandoned or rejected when they were younger. Yes or no? Lady, is that not true? Tell me. You raised up your hand. Is that not true? Why are you not laughing like this? <laughs> Who else raised up your hand? Who else did? You did? Is that not true? Were you, you were abandoned or rejected? What happened? Give me a microphone. Give me a microphone. Look at that. Just... No, 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 no. She just in the wrong place, please. Yeah. So tell me how you are in relationships. Tell me how you are in relationships. Okay. You um, can actually sit down. You don't have to stand up. Okay, thank you. Um, I when I was younger, I had um, I was actually abandoned. Like not really abandoned, but like my feelings and emotions were neglected. Wow. So yes. So, um, in my relationship now, like, I'm just in my past relationships. I'm always very clingy, and I always want to be around him because I felt safe with him. The feeling I didn't get when I was younger, I had it to him. So and what did he tell you that made him feel? Um, actually, he was actually okay with it because I opened up to him. I told him... Until now, he's still okay with it. No. <laughs> it's no longer out here. The reason why is that, let me tell you something. You know, you want to be careful when people say they are okay with something. Because they will use their leg to tell you they are not okay. By leaving. Because when you, when you, you must, let me tell you, really, uh, listen to me. Relationship is that you are not the only one that has need. Even the person that you want to understand also has need. So when you think that, some people just don't talk. Like, this need is too much. They will pack their load and go away. Because, the thing with being clingy and suffocating that they will not, you are meant to be their play and rest place. They will not be looking for another play and rest place. So they will ultimately fall out of love with you and fall in love with somebody else. So I see one of the signs is clinginess. The other extreme is what? Avoidance. They don't get close to anybody. In the relationship, they are independent. Where are they? No, let me see. Wave your hands if they are here. Eh. Wave, wave. wave. They are independent. Wave there. You don't have to wait for them. Don't you know yourself? You are the one that needs to leave us, not me. Is that not true? Don't wave your hand now. We will pray for you. Wave your hands if you are here. 
Eh, give her the microphone so she can tell me. Give her. How do you behave? No, no, no. Black. Wait, wait, black. Yeah. How do you behave in your relationships? <laughs> okay, so I just want to be on my own most of the time. Like, I mean, anything goes. Anything goes. If it comes, good. Mm, if it, it doesn't come, come, good. What yes. else? If you call, mm. if you call me, mm. I call you back. If you don't text call me, me, I don't, I don't text call you back. back. <laughs> uh, I, I want to ask you: Can this behavior lead to marriage? <laughs> but, but the reason why the reason why is that that comes. Let me get some. Who, who else wants to say something here? Who? No, I want to call someone that I I, I don't know the, the guy over there. Okay. You're, okay, they're touching. Your friends are touching you. Give it to that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Use the microphone, sir. I know you're laughing, but use the microphone. So, how do you be in a relationship? Uh, <laughs> aloof. Aloof. That's a great word for those that want to be aloof. <laughs> Break it down. You see. You see the avoidance showing up also? He's having a conversation but he's saying nothing. Okay. But I can play. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so um, I would... If I try and there is no meeting me halfway, I'll just stop. If you what? If I try and there is no reciprocal... Um, Behavior. I'll but what stop. was your, your, your ex-girlfriend, what did she com used to complain about? Uh, I would... Avoid conflict. Yeah, what? Avoid conflict. You yeah, avoid conflict? Yes. Yeah, because it's a function of avoidance. Can you see? The avoidance. And you know why he avoids conflict? The reason why he avoids conflict is that he doesn't know how to genuinely navigate conflicts and bring solutions without problems. So, Ikukuma avoids it. And when you have conflict, you will not fight. Abi? Use the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. You will raise your voice and Okongan will come down. Or work out. What? Or work out. Your work out. Look at that. Hmm. Deliverance is here. Yeah. How many of you are seeing yourself gradually? You are seeing yourself gradually, right? Okay. Let's talk about some signs of emotional wounds. And I want to just give you... So let me get to you from there to give you signs. Like, you know... Maybe you were struggling, you have a story to tell, and this is how you felt. The reason why is that because this is a human experience, it cannot be limited by what I know alone. I can share a lot, but there's a lot more than that. You know, okay, yeah, signs of emotional when I, I went through this. I, I want people that have not really spoken, you know, there's someone that never talk in church. That's what I'm looking for today. Yeah. So who, who on this area? Just raise up your hands. Yeah. People that have never spoken. The more you bow down your head, the more I call you, just to let you know. Yeah. Are you nominating her? Are you nominating her? Ha. Okay, give her the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you, were, you were pointing at her, right? Okay, yeah. Your friend needs to think out of this. So, yeah. Just give her the microphone. Yeah. So, what are the signs of someone that has an emotional wound in your own experience? What have you experienced? Okay, um, I hardly move on. Do you, you need to use the mic. What? Yes, I hardly move on. No, you hardly. No, you need move to put the microphone. Okay, I hardly move on. You sit in the pain. Yes. How do you do that? Okay, I. You need I to hold the microphone closer to you so I can hear you. Okay, I keep talking about it. Mm. I don't let go. Why don't you let it go? The pain and um, what I've invested in the relationship. Wow. So it's, it's really hard to move on. So when you keep talking about it, how do you feel? You feel better? I feel pain and at times I feel better. Oh, is it that you've trained yourself to enjoy the pain? <laughs> well, I'm getting better. You're getting better? Yes. Hmm. When you eventually move on, what makes you move on? Someone else comes into your life. Until when I meet someone who is going to fill in that space. And you know what to do that person? You show the person fire first. <laughs> True or false? Uh, 
That was before, but my friend actually talked to me that I don't have to do that. Okay, well, that's why we're here for you. Give it to your friend. She too has one. It, 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 yeah. And she pointed you out. She will have something to share. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the emotional wound I deal with is like... You can tell me how it happened and what the wound they left on you, yeah? Ah. Uh. <laughs> Don't worry. Bless us with the story. Jesus loves you. Like I've been in a lot of toxic situations. What am I toxic? Like we're not working together. We're kind of working against each other. How, how do you mean? I don't understand. I mean like the relationship is shallow. Okay. Just like what you're saying is shallow right now. <laughs> because I can tell you're not talking. You're just talking. Yeah. So if this is how you talk, I can understand why the relationship is shallow. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, you know, it's different when you have a open connection with the person. I've not had that before. You never had that before? No. Do you think you're open as a person? No. But the Bible says that Whatever a man sows, he shall reap. Yes, so how can you not be open, think you'll have an open relationship? I think the man will be open first, then I'll now be open. I, I want to give you a hug. Come, come, come and take the hug. Come and take the hug. Come and take the hug. You will soon write your own Bible. Come and take a hug. Come and take a hug. <clears throat> come and take a hug. <clears throat> you will soon write what? Your own Bible. Well done. Thank you. The Bible says... Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he reap. He didn't say you will reap and sow after. So if you want openness, what do you get to sow? Openness. That's it. Someone says, but they can take advantage of me. You don't understand. You've sown the seed. Where you sow the seed is not where you get your harvest sometimes. But your harvest will eventually come. Praise God. Let me take one from here. From here. Yeah, thank you. There's a lady raising up the hand. Tell me a story about the emotional wound you had. Yes, yeah, tell me. Yeah. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Okay, um, growing up, I've, I don't know how to explain this. I grew up in a, a toxic family. Okay. Like, uh, Why do you say your family is toxic? Okay, my mom and dad separated when I was seven. And then I stayed with my grandparents, and then they literally called my mom names. What? They, they called my mom names. What did they? Like my grandparents, and then okay. my dad's family. So, um, I grew up seeing myself being, um, how do I put this, um, emotion, emotionally unstable. You grew up, how did you know you were emotionally unstable? Okay, um, that was around 18 years. How did you know? What happened? How did you know that? Okay, um, when I was 18, I, if, I got to find out, like, from my friends. They began complaining the way, um, about the way I behave and all that. How did you used to behave? I'm very vocal. Like, I'm verbal with words. You, you say your mind. Yes. And you are impolite about it. Yes, I don't care how you're feeling. That's how it is. And That's also, it. I noticed that I started writing um, depressive notes and all that. Why is I your had... voice shaking? <laughs> I don't like sharing it. What? You are shedding tears, yeah? <laughs> no, no. I, like, I don't like sharing it. You don't like what? Sharing it with people. Sharing? But you're very vocal. Why do you like sharing? Like the reason why is that most people you think talk a lot say nothing. In fact, they talk a lot so you can't ask them very personal questions. So, your being vocal was a form of defense, yes or no? Yes, sir. You see? Because... Some, of, some people you think I have superiority complex is that inferiority complex that manifests as superiority complex. So the way they manifest that they pull other people down so they can feel on top. Yes, continue, my um, friend. So I entered the university and I felt like the whole world was on me because this was a different um, scenario. Like it's different from the way I was at home. Like I was meeting a lot of people and all that and different characters in place. So, um, 
I started withdrawing. My activities became this. Um, I, the way I acted in school was I go to church, class, hostel, and then play football. That's it. Then um, I continued with that pattern of writing um, um, depressive notes. Like I have like a full book on depression and all that. We're journaling. Yes. And uh, 100 level second semester, I tried committing suicide. Well, um, my roommate caught me and then she... Why, why did you want to commit suicide within those periods? Well, um, after my first semester exam, the, the result was okay. Like, to me, like, to other persons, it was okay. It was 3.75. 3.75? Yes. That was a 2-1? Yes, sir. Okay. But I was not happy with it because I was looking at 4.550. And that's why we went to commit suicide? <laughs> <laughs> you know what he's got talking about with a hard pass that's what they're talking about <laughs> so I was wow. not... okay okay your dad is very critical right which one's critical your dad or your mom well both of them both of them i didn't know they were critical it takes critical parents for you to do well and feel as if you've not done well. The reason why is that when you have critical parents, no matter what you've done well, they will see what has not been done. So if you come third, third, people that came first and second, do they have two heads? <laughs> let, me tell you, a, a, let me tell you a good way to lose your self-esteem. A good way to lose your self-esteem is to keep focusing on what you're not good at. And that's what everybody does. So the fair people want to be dark. The dark people want to be fair. The people want to be slim. Slim people want to be fat. Tall people want to be short. Short people want to be tall. Men want to be women. Women want to be men. I mean, it's not 100%. Because, you know, I, you know, I was telling someone, I said, we'd we like to be a girl. I said, sure. I, all I just did in one sense, one sense to marry the right man, that's all. Look at this lady's story right now. 3.5, 3.7 GP. And she's, she, she didn't feel cry. She wanted to commit suicide. The reason why is that, is that, is that she had big GP, but her emotion was too tiny. And her emotion could not carry her. If her friend did not find that, this lady now will have been dead today. And that's why we're doing this. That's why we're doing this. So this is your first assignment. And let me tell you something. If you choose to attend these teachings, I'm going to group you into classes. And because I want to discuss in between the class. And you want, what I want to do is to identify what are the wounds I have. What do I feel? Because I want you to personally experience healing. I want to personally experience healing. We'll take one more and we'll close. Can I get one more from this side? All of you in the gallery, will, will, I will come next week. Yeah, from this side. Yeah. Anybody? Where? There's a guy. Okay. Let me pass the microphone to the guy. It's just two... two. Yeah. Okay, for me, I would say uh, inferiority complex. You know, I grew up in a home where my dad was always violating my mom. You understand? So, and people were always talking about my dad, and like my family. And but when my dad goes out, and he have, drove you out, sir. When your dad did what? When my dad goes out, yeah, and have issue with his mate, so they would beat him up, <laughs> and then. We just like run around the like when your town. Dad, they will beat up your dad. They will beat up my dad. Okay. Is it the police force? <laughs> Is it the police force? No, it's not. Okay. So once they beat him up, they will just run around the community. Have you slapped your girlfriend before? No, that's one thing I promised myself that I would never lay my. It hand doesn't off. matter if you listen, listen. That does make a point. Either you promise yourself or not. <laughs> Makes it's... a difference. But have you warned her before that you know I can? Have you won that before? If I've won, 
your girlfriend before. They, you know, I can't do this. You won't have before. That was what led to my 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 breakup. She the, the, provoked me to the point where you won her. When I won her, so I said, if you can provoke me to this extent, because I can. I, I don't want to. I so, don't want to. Yeah, I would rather just break up. You see what I'm saying? It's getting there. <laughs> because the first time that you won, then you won again. Then you mistakenly, me mistakenly. So I says, why am I saying this? I, I can never promote violence. I'm saying this because you do what you are exposed to. It's not what, so it's not what to decide you do. You do what you are exposed to. So my brother, if you want to change, you must find a way of exposing yourself to people that respect the relationship. I know you know what you don't want to do, but you need to know exactly what you want to do. Yeah. I want us to close. I, I will take your story next week. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's pray.